it's Joseph from RoboFlow, and today I have a quick video for you showing you how to use the RoboFlow inference API with Python. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna make use of the hosted API, assuming that you've trained a model successfully, and now you wanna use that model in production. Now, the demonstration that I'm going to do today is using my model with Python. And the model that I've trained today is a model for detecting chess pieces. And so if I flip over to my model here, you'll see on my RoboFlow account, I've successfully trained this model that I'm pretty happy with its performance. It'll find chess pieces, 98.7% mean average precision. Uh, now the thing to do is, how can I use this model in my application? For this example, I'm gonna pretend like I will have like internet access for the purposes of my application, meaning that I can send images over the wire and receive back predictions. When I can programmatically get these API responses, then I can do things with my application. For example, maybe I can zoom in on a chess piece or knowing which chess piece is on a chess board, I can store all the moves that a given user made in their given chess game. Now, the code that we're gonna use today is making use of this code here, assuming that we're uploading an image from local and then calling the inference API. Now, to get set up, you'll note that we'll need to have our API key as well as a sample image. So let me show you where to get your API key first. On your overflow account, you can go to your account here, click settings, and then inside the workspace that you're working in, so here I'm working on my personal workspace, I'll go down to RoboFlow API. Now I'm gonna use my private API key, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. Next, I'll then inside my workspace, I'll need to know which model I'm going to work with. So here, uh, I'm gonna be working with my chess pieces model and specifically this version. So I need both these pieces of information, the API key as well as the version and model I'm gonna be working with. Okay, now once I have my API key, I'm gonna actually just paste that into my notebook here and just call it my key and then hit enter. Now I'm not gonna show you my API key and you shouldn't show others your API key either. You should keep it private to your account. Now the next thing is I'm gonna go over and copy the code snippet that's already for me in the RoboFlow documentation. So I see this code snippet here, I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna paste it into my notebook. And you'll note that this code snippet assumes that I'm running my model uh, or that I have an image that I'm using that I'm uploading from local. Now I could also use an image that I might have stored um, via a URL, and that's also in the documentation. Now to make this a little bit cleaner so I don't import my libraries every single time uh, that I call the API, I'm actually gonna break this up into two cells. So I have my first cell here that's importing all my dependencies, and then I'll have my second cell here where I actually do the uh, calling of the API. And that's what we're gonna walk through is how to use that second piece of code. So with this second piece of code, you'll note that I need to fill in a few things. I need to have an example image ready, which we'll get ready here in a moment. I need to have um, the specific parameters for calling my model and the model version number. So this is where I pass through my specific project name and then the version of the model that I'm gonna use. I need to pass my API key and then I'm gonna pass an image as well. Now to make things a little bit easier for myself, I'm just gonna replace your image with a variable called image path uh, that we'll fill in above. So I'm just gonna call this image path. Now, of course, I can make image path be set to any sort of image that I want uh, once I'm actually going to be calling the API. So here, instead of your name, I'm gonna have plus image path. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the API key with, instead of your key, it's gonna be, um, uh, the key that I set above. So I'm just gonna call that my key. So if I go up here, um, oh, I don't want this little quotation after image path, so let me delete that quotation. And then I'm also gonna set here to be plus my key. Okay, now the last thing that I need to do is I need to replace the URL where I'm calling your model with actually a specific model name and with the version that I want to be called. So I'll go back to my RoboFlow account and this is where I identify the model version that I want to run and the um, project name. So here I have chess full and then this unique identifier in version nine. 
So that's what I'm gonna paste in here is that specific uh, project ID and version nine. Okay, now the last thing that I need to do is I need to fill in a given image path. Now, remember, I already filled in my API key before I filmed this video and ran that cell. You can see that cell has already been run. That's why the number one is there. I don't wanna show you my API key, which is why I'm not filling that in during the video. Now, the image path, um, I happen to have a chess image ready. Uh, so inside my documents, um, I have this chess image. And that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna upload that right into my Colab notebook and give that a moment to upload. And Google is gonna tell me um, that this will not be available after my session, but that's okay. So now I have this, this image available and I can actually mouse over it. And you'll see these three dots appear. I'm gonna copy path, which copies the file path for the location of this specific image. Meaning Colab will know where that chess image lives in my current uh, session here. So I'm gonna paste that into my image path variable. And now I have everything set up that I need for calling the RoboFlow inference API. I've already got my API key. I'm gonna set the file path here. So I've just called that cell and I've set the file path. I'm gonna import the requisite libraries and dependencies. And then with everything all set up, and a little bit of good luck, assuming I didn't make any small mistakes, I'll call the RoboFlow Inference API. And I'll call it with, you'll notice here what we're doing is we're setting an image to open up the specific image here with image path, convert it to RGB. We're then gonna convert that to a base64 image out of bytes. Um, now I convert that into an image string here. Then we're gonna construct the upload your, or the, uh, the inference URL. So I'm gonna to join together the uh, endpoint here of detect.roboflow.com with the specific version. I'm gonna call, set up my API key and set up the directory. And then I'm gonna call that API and print out, or then I'm gonna make the request with the URL that we set above. And then I'm gonna print out the JSON response. And so that's what I've done step by step here. Let's scroll down and see the result. Uh-oh, looks like I have a end of literal. Oh, yes, need to add that little comma there after my key. Okay, and with those two little clerical fixes, I called API successfully. And so here you get the response back of a JSON formatted predictions. So I get the X, Y position of the center of a bounding box, the width of that bounding box, the height of that bounding box, the class name that was predicted, and the respective confidence for that given prediction. And so with this, I can do things like maybe draw the boxes, maybe only honor responses of when the confidence is above some level. I can check and see where objects are in my image. I can count things. I can see if things are moving across frame. The possibilities are really, really pretty endless. So hope this example helps. Be sure to like and subscribe for other sorts of videos and common trends in computer vision, and I'll see you next time.